Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Thanks for coming. Kind of rainy out. Yeah. Good. good day to be in here. Yeah, no doubt. Right. It's always good day to get quilting. Yes. Um. So you got your <coughs> pattern. So you'll notice there's one big thing missing. We don't have any idea how wide our fabric is. Fabric. That's because I want you to get this stuff out. Your little bitty pieces, right? So um, we've talked about this several times, how you sort your fabric. Yeah. And so we've got, that's actually quite a bit, but um, little pieces. This is just not enough to really do anything with. If you're doing an applique project, this would be perfect. And so, um, let me see if I can remember her name. You know I'm terrible with names. Um, Penny Heron came and did, uh, she teaches designs for creative grids. And so, what I learned from her was to sort my fabric by style. Oh. And sort by color. Is that kind That's of what I do different? It's a little bit different. A little bit different. So what she does is she'll take all of her reproduction fabrics mm -hmm. and all of those are together. All of her Christmas fabrics are together. All of her boutiques are together. I do that too. All of her 30s prints, right? So when you pull out a bin to make, because she makes really scrappy quilts. That's her mm -hmm. style of quilt. What's her name again? Penny Heron. And I have a really cool pattern of hers, but it's not active quilt. I'm like, Heron? Heron, H A R I N, I think is how you spell it. Okay. Let me see. I know that Penny Heron. We might be able to pull it off. I just have stories. Like, case I need to pull up. Yeah, she's um, she's done some amazing, amazing stuff, and you know she was a delight to have here in the in the shop. But so so when you do that and you pull out your bin, so this one is kind of my brights. There might be a couple of reproductions in here because I just really just okay. yeah. So I can just make this quilt, you know, this table runner with these fabrics. I don't have to go through and go, well, is this reproduction fabric and go to a 30s print. So if you want to pick a theme for your table runner, Christmas, or 4th of July or whatever, Easter, yeah. you know, then um, You can just pull from this bucket, and it would be a lot, lot, lot easier for you to find. These are just suggestions for colors. Okay. So, yeah. Great. Um, is A kind of a gray color on here? Gray <clears throat> green, or what would you say? A is kind of, so A, you're going to want to have as a common theme. So that's going to be your background print. Background. But there's a double A. There's another A on there. Yeah, it's more two of a A's. Browny color. Okay, so the brown color, um, whatever. You could make it navy or. Yeah, and then there's turquoise A also. Yeah. So A is for the size of the shape. Okay. okay. So. Oh, I see that now. Mm -hmm. Oh, gotcha. So the first one in the that list in that column is 12 patches. <clears throat> That's going to be your background. Okay. That light color. Um, I don't know if I have a big background in here. I'm sure. Because you're going to need a lot more of a background for four blocks, right? Yeah. Don't we have four blocks total? Five. Five. Yeah. yeah. So what's the size of the table runner? So the um, blocks are how many? The blocks are 12 inch. Finished. Right. So I might use 12 this. Five is 70. Uh, 60. Oh, 60. Yeah. Plus your, less a little bit with your seams. 
No, it'll be 60. I'm finished. Oh, finished. 12. 12 and a half unfinished. Got it. Times that. Let me see if I can find it. Someday I'd like to see those blue bonnets yeah. in Texas. That's very fascinating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not today. We're not going to get okay. to see Penny today, some of her, her stuff. Right. Um, so this is a pretty simple block to put together. It is a lot of piecing in this. So our last project, we used the 4-inch cube and the 8-inch cube to make a quilt that did not combine sizes in the block. So one of the things I said I wanted to teach you was how to use your cube to make a pretty common block more interesting. So all of our blocks are going to be based on the churn dash block. Okay. Very simple block. So when you're looking at 12 inch blocks that are nine patch using AccuQuilt, it's really easy to go, okay, well I can add a little extra here with my four inch cube. So in this little, yeah. or in this center square, right? So we know that each of these shapes finishes to half the size of our cube size, right? Like this. So if you're working off the the churn, churn, churn dash is a good example because each segment of the block is four inches. If our four inch cube, each section finishes to, to, to um, half the size, then you can get this kind of spinning, spinning wheel. Or yeah, yeah, spinning wheel in the middle of it yeah. and make it more interesting. Same thing with the Ohio Star, another four, a nine patch that you can make real easily mm -hmm. with your eight inch cube. You can do the same thing with your six inch cube and your 12 inch cube. Mm -hmm. Five and 10 inch cube. Nine's out there on their own. Yeah. So, but same thing. So those <coughs> cubes can go together and you can make your blocks more complex. So if you are liking to take a pattern and make it your own, right? Because the patterns that we see in magazines, they're kind of simple, mm -hmm. right? They're not very complex, but you can be extra and just add a little bit. Any questions so far? Other than the ones we covered size of block here. Yeah, you won't need much of the background fabric and you can find, I'm certain, in your stash, coordinating backgrounds. So when you're looking at your stash, so this one works for that brown. 
um, when you're going through your stash, if you can find um, kind of a real neutral, I thought I grabbed this one because I thought it had like a lot of, yeah. So if you can find a real neutral, you can make your neutral prints background. Mm -hmm. So nothing says that all of your background pieces have to be the same color. They just have to be in the same color family. Okay. Right? And so you can even throw in a light piece. And that way you're not having to worry about, okay, how much white do I need to use? Karen? I've been like doing this one time and I really don't like what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> um, like, what do you mean in the same family? Color family. Color family. So if you wanted to do, say, um, Christmas, right? And you wanted to make your background green. So you would select all greens for that. So I'm pulling out all creams for my background fabric. Even though they have other colors now. Right, they're yeah. in the same color family. So they're all creams or kind of neutrally prints. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, Kim Deal does it all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where she, but you know, it's a little easier for her because she's pulling from the same collection mm -hmm. and like Kansas Troubles and My Sister and Me all of her preceding fabrics will match her current collection. <clears throat> so, makes it easy. And we just did get a Kim Deal collection in if you're interested in looking at it. Let me know if you see that. Some of these are really old fabrics. And I did pick up another tip. I was traveling, so I was watching YouTube. And it was from another, um, I don't know if she's a designer or if she's just a quilter, but she was like, Use your newest fabrics first. Use what? Your new fabrics. Uh -huh. So if you get some new fabrics, don't save them. How many of you have a collection or two of Kim? Who facet? Oh, yeah. yeah. That you're like, well, I can't really prep that up yet. <laughs> so I have some fabric on bolts. <laughs> <laughs> About <I> inherited <laughs> every five years. They change the color hue. So we'll do a drastic example for that. The 80s, that country blue, right? And that pink. And that pink. You can't find those colors today. No. But if you have fabric, you gotta hope that you have some matching colors to go with it, right? So, same thing with the fabrics coming out today, right? That that Kelly green that they're using for Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. Three, four years ago, be gone. That pale bluish kind of aqua that they're using. A few years it'll be gone. And use your new first. Use your new fabrics. You should get your coordinated together. To get your coordinated. <laughs> Um, yeah, I try not to flex. It, it, it's not working, but I do try. <laughs> and then I have a rule for myself, it's not for you, that if I am making a quilt, I have to, I can add fabric, but I have to use something out of my stash. So, it's kind of fun because if you find you've got, you know, a two and a half or three yard piece of fabric in your stash that you really love, you can just carry that with you to the yes. fabric store and go pick out some there. coordinating yeah. fabrics, right? Or say you have two or three, even three fabrics that are in your stash that are coordinating, grab them, bring them in, we'll help you find something to go with it. Yeah. It just goes with that vintage one that I made. Yeah, I should have brought it today because you guys came. I got it back for me to quilt it, and I still need to bind it. But yeah. I was lacking like back.
background or binding and mm -hmm. things like that. So I had the and the backing. Yeah, it turned out really really well. Little background for each. Well, I wasn't different. Um. Yeah. So in your background, you can even make each shape different. You just need to have a, a theme. This one, I'm, I'm looking at it. It doesn't really go. It's kind of dark or light. Are all of the blocks going to be just like this? Not exactly the same. They'll be similar. So similar blocks, but this one, um, I see it to work. I pull it up. I think I might be able to get to it. So... I'm looking for a teal. I'm sure, there's a teal in here somewhere. So, nice way to pull out some of these little scraps and use. I like this one too. Um, I don't fold them a lot. I don't have a source for these. I found these bought these bins a long time ago. Yeah, it's from one of our classes. It's a comb for the mustache. And a purple. Yes. And that's a batik. I don't really want to mix a batik. That's a cool purple. So then I need a dark, dark brown and a dark, dark green. Yeah, the center ought to stand out a little bit more. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe this. <laughs> and I just passed a green that I liked. This one, got this, I might use that on the inside one, but so the key here, so even though I've done some sorting, you're going to want to go through and lay out your fabric pieces together, this is going to be, that's going to be enough, to make sure that the colorway is, okay. is matching together so, they so play well together. that they play well together. Yeah. <laughs> so is this the first block of many to come? This is the first of five. Five. Yep. So each month, each month we'll get a different and make a, a different block. So when we're picking fabrics, we should kind of think in mind, um, don't do Christmas if we don't want this to be a Christmas quilt. Right. Right. Unless you do, a, you do a one pattern all the seasons. Yeah, there you go. That'd be kind of cool. That would be interesting for sure. That would be, you know, four blocks, but we could, you know, do something different in the middle and kind of go crazy. There you go. <laughs> I'm just talking. <laughs> We're going to cut down. No, so I, I mean, the lazy uh, like me. <laughs> I love season. it. So, seasons. talking about, I mean, we call it spring balling, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You never know where those ideas come from. So, why not? Yeah. And you could call it your four season. Yeah. Table work. Table work. Actually, I think see if you're lazy kind of like me. Well, there was lazy. a four seasons quilt. <laughs> but I, I have no story. <laughs> I, just, I just throw it out. That's it. That's all that's going to decorate for this one. Actually, I don't have any story from. What about those? We downsize. The purple time. doesn't quite go. So this black for the center pinwheel. This for the brown, this for the green, purple. I know I have some better purples in there. Where would someone else 
Yeah, there was a solid before mm -hmm. and a solid. It was this one. Yeah. Can't find it there. It's kind of dark next to the black though. There was a rings out on the edge. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. Was that one? To get those? Nope, not that. Still need a green. No, nope, that's the green. So I threw that purple away, and the purple doesn't go next to the black. It's the green does. The green does. <clears throat> now I'm gonna find there it is. No, it'll be good. Something. <laughs> and, and you know, I know everybody has these, right? Yeah. Little pieces like this, but what do you do with them? Um, Got them small enough and only in the rest of them. I was really wanting to pull up this. Um, no, it's this PC. I can't tell if it's on or off. That's the PC. So, Mary has a great quote for what do you do with these scraps? That's not a green scrap. That's not a green There it goes again. What else? Especially if you're just doing a block at a time, it's it's a way to gradually get the idea of what so, you're going to do. <laughs> so we have all such a hard time, you know, scrappy. Mm -hmm. And I love scrappy. Kind of matchy, groups. matchy. Uh, well, not matchy, matchy, but yeah, yeah. coordinate, yeah. coordinate. Plan. 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 So she could she designed a lot of quilts. She did. So she um, does designs for creative grids. So here's one. Great scrap scrappy quilt. Um, I think a Gappy quilt has a die for this. So it looks like that Washington's puzzle. Yeah, so it's just one seam out of her collection. She has her words. She has a very large collection of um, reproduction fabrics. This is the pattern that I was talking about. Ooh, oh my. Wow. I have that pattern if anybody's interested. It needs some work. This uses creative grids. Um, it's a Dresden, <laughs> Dresden here. Um, these are applique, and these are a different size than the cube. Um, and the log cabins are in there. Too. And log cabins are in there. Yeah. So that's one of her and designs. Of detail quilt that she has given away. Hi, guys. There is a die for that. So what do I do with my scraps? I cut out some bow ties and when you're bored, 
and don't want to start a new project. You sew some bow ties together, throw them in a bin, and then eventually you have a quilt. But you got to start with sorting your fabric into themes. Christmas thing, because this, you know, all those leftover Christmas fabrics we have. Yeah. 30s prints. This this quilt works for anything. Um, reproduction fabrics. Probably not K Facet though, because he uses those really large prints. Yeah. She did really large bow ties. <laughs> and then it wouldn't be a scrap. And then it wouldn't be a scrap. But um, so you can see, I don't know, can you see how there's different colors of white? Creams and whites. So you don't have to use just one. And if it and if you get your block done and you're like, mm, it doesn't really work, you have four more blocks to go. Slide yeah. that through the <coughs> the rest of them. Yeah, if you're using muslin or something, it would kill you because your back brown, but yeah, they're so good with colors. Your patterns that So some repeat, so like she did this block, did that block, that block. Yep. So you can make your block the same, you can make your block different. I'm gonna make mine a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Sure. So maybe not that one. I might set throw some of that in. So just audition your fabrics, and oh, I have my first one. <laughs> and I'm gonna hold these fabrics out of my stash. Yeah. I'm not gonna throw them back in right. because we've got some blocks that have one piece is one color. So okay. there's a diamond. Well, it's not about diamond. It's on point okay. around my entire block. I think I included that one in this one. I designed a whole bunch of these blocks, and then I went through and just picked the ones that I thought. Work the best. So, okay. Oh, my doctor's helping. Okay. Thank you, Jen. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. So, I'm going to keep those fabrics out and try to use them, mix them in, mix them in the rest of it. Okay. So, and if I don't have enough, I'll go in here. I have another few of these. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I mean, stuff like this. Um, the back to the bow tie. Bow tie is perfect. So if you wanted to make just a wall hanging, you could use your four inch cube, you know, and make little pieces because I've got some little stuff in here too. And you can get a bow tie out of those colors. Oh. I like those colors together. But I probably wouldn't make a bow tie. I'd find some neutral fabric and tie it all together. So, so the bow tie part is is just a piece or is three it three pieces? I think. So it's three dies. Oh, okay. So, um, so the squares. So to make the bow tie, it's um, die number two. Number two, and then it's die number twelve. Is it a rectangle or something? No, it's a square, but it has just a little notch off of it. Uh -oh. 
So, and then the really tiny triangle. So if you wanted to do it in the eight inch cube, they're, they're fairly decent sized. It makes a four inch block. Yeah. You can look in your drawer, but they're not sitting in the drawer. So yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I actually think it's in the pattern booklet. I think there's a bomb die for a, a hose die too. Yeah, I think it makes a six inch. So you do a six inch yeah. cube. You don't really need that. Sure. Um, but you can make it with your cube. So it's um, you need the angles, okay. which yeah, we all have. You all have. Okay. <clears throat> Cutting for this one is really simple. Um, you are using die three from the four inch cube or die five from the eight inch cube. They're the same die, they're the same size. Um, die number four from the eight inch cube is your what's that word? back room. Yeah. Um, die number three from the eight inch cube is your quarter square triangle C, half square triangles, yeah. And then die number four from the four inch cube. Okay. For shape number D. Those little bitty ones and the pinwheel. And so, so this, doesn't use any angles. Not yet, no. Nope. Angles are in another one. So you just need the basic cubes for these. For this block. Yep. So one pass with this for mm -hmm. cutting out your pinwheel. Well, you could layer both of the fabrics and cut them both. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. And they're purple. Yeah. Yeah, I cut the, um, Tuesday night block using Appy Quilt, and I was like, it's done. Or instead of yeah, I missed the first print. Rotary cutting. I make the quilt first, and I'm in the same um, fabrics, more of a masculine mm -hmm. like shirt fabric type thing. But it's all done in strips, and then you cut it into the different. So, yep, two and a half, one yeah. and a half, three yeah. inch. Yeah. And then I took it back. Well, I measured because I needed six and a half, four and a half, and then three inch blocks. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so I cut Straight first on. my six and a half wide mm -hmm. in the rotary. Because I have one, two more pieces. I have I finally got pieces kind of sewn together. Now I get to start putting them together. But everything I cut, other than the six and a half, four and a half, and the three, well, even the three, I used the strips and then put them back through, and then two and a half that way. Yeah. And they go fast. Just, they go fast, and my husband says, you already got that cut out already. He says, well, it took me a while, because it's a big quilt, it took me a lot of pieces. Yeah. But I love that thing. I used to hate to. I'm short, and about the time I get to the end of the strip, it would go off. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, I, when I have to, and I'm at home, I don't do it here, but when I'm at home and I'm cutting my width of fabric, I actually fold it in half. Me too. So that I'm only cutting four layers, right? 12 or 13 inches across because as we get older yeah. we're not you know working out with our weights we should be but we're not but um at least i'm not i don't know 
um, doing those. I lifted mulch the other day. My arms are sore. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, you don't have the strength out here for the control. So, if you want to get yourself some five pound weights, and it doesn't seem like a lot, but when you do 20 of them, mm -hmm. it's this motion. Like, for walking the yeah, and you don't go all the way down. You stop here. Right. And go up, stop. And that works those exact rotary cutting muscles. <laughs> if you're not ready for five pounds, you can just do these. Because just raising your arms up like that and stopping and holding will actually help your posture. Your women get in better legs. Um, helps your posture and your strength. Okay, questions? Okay. So the D is your quarter square triangle and it goes in the center. Is that how I'm reading that? Yes. Yeah. And the, the B is a quarter square. Oh, that's for the pine bees. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. So pay attention to whether it's a four inch or an eight inch cube. And if you cut wrong, just put it on the baggie and save for later. <laughs> it's probably a cut too many of them. Put it on a baggie and that's right. Save it for the next walk. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So somebody it's gonna be fun. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and there's a couple of blocks that will work like that in the cube. You have to look at the, the, the book that comes free with your cube. It has a couple of blocks that you can just read. Square and a square. You can make that scrappy. So, um, use the, you do it either way. So, use the outside of the square and a square as your same fabric. And then have a neutral inside and make the neutral diamond on point square a theme in the quilt or reverse it and make the square on point square a different color and the four corners neutral. And the square in the square uses a half square triangle or the quarter square triangle? It uses die number six and die number five. Let me verify that. Pretty sure, but let me just verify it. Six is right. I think five is right. Half square. Yeah, five. You can buy replacement um, dies. dies. Yeah, it is die number. Is it the four? It's four and six. No, four is the four inch finished square. Five is the half square. It's die number five and die number six. I don't actually tell you which dice it comes in here. It's like they give you the list, but then yeah, once you get it all cut out. I used the four on a project I just did. It, it came out all right. It is the number. You can look at your block. Probably right over here. It's number five. So lay out pin, sew one bright blue two inch half foot, two inch. Finished half square triangle. So it's the half square triangle, not yep. the quarter square triangle. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Die number five. And you just do opposite sides and then the other opposite side. Yep. Sew them together. Press them as you go. Yeah. So, and then one of the things I do when I'm sewing those, I'll take my doohickey. Does everybody have a doohickey? Mm -hmm. Yep. Or a thing for mom. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have two. I couldn't find the first one. <laughs> That's always the so case. So I had to have 
them and now they're It's always the case. So you should like do the heat. <laughs> press a <laughs> crease yeah. in your block. Don't use your arms. Press a crease. Line up the point with the crease. And that'll... Because it, it does stick out a little bit on these sides. Yeah. When you're doing quarter square triangles. But... That would be a really cool quill because if you place your blocks right, you can get, say you do blues and grays and blacks and um, you actually get two quarter square triangles because where those blocks meet, it's going to create another quarter square triangle. So if you pick the theme where, okay, I'm going to pull out all of my blue pieces and make four square or square and squares, then um, it would be kind of a cool quilt because you would create that repeating pattern mm -hmm. too. Otherwise, you're like in King Deal land, and I love King Deal, where you're creating these. Yeah, it's fun really just to different. sit and put blocks together, and then yeah, if you don't know what to do with them, you just save them, and eventually you'll probably put them in something. Yeah. Yeah, so you could piece them together, cut them out, use like the apple core die, and then you've got piece applique shapes, which is fun. So, a lot of options. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, people want a pattern. I do. Online? Yeah. Um, I'll make it available on the web for them. Okay. And so they'll just download it every month. The first pat the first month is five dollars. There is a I did make a quilt pattern to go with this, and it'll be an additional five hundred dollars if you want that. I don't really use table runners because there's too many men in my house <laughs> to put something like that on my table. So why table runners? Yeah. I think I like the four season idea. I do too. So I'll make it available on the web. Check check in just a couple of minutes, and then you can yeah, download. So next time we'll have another pattern. Yeah. Different pattern. Yep. Well, I tried. Yep. Different time after that. Different pattern. So we'll go for five months. So we voted, and well, I didn't vote. We voted, and the club said they wanted to do the table runner. So we're going to go for five months, and then we'll start something new. Yeah. And I'm it's doing fun. another and we don't fight. medallion <laughs> quilt, but it's not on point. So. You're not to scare anybody off. Yeah.